Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here, and today we're gonna be studying a Civ 6 turn 100 win. Wait, I shouldn't lie to you. The game's actually won on turn 90. It's even faster. Just to be clear, that's DD difficulty with a standard sized map on standard game speed. Yeah, he's just that good. There's timestamp chapters so you can jump around or fast forward to the action whenever you want. Quick shout out to Jackson Reeves and Steven Sadler who've been channel members here on YouTube for 27 and 43 months respectively. I fully intend to quit my job and do this full time at some point and you guys are definitely helping me make that dream come true that much quicker. Anyway, I'm just gonna shut up and let's jump right into this. All right, here we go. So you can see generally that he settled on a really nice spot there. However, the strategy that he's gonna be using is taking advantage of the new Cleopatra's ability where she gets an extra food and an extra culture yield when she settles on tiles that are on floodplains adjacent to a river. And that's crucial for the strategy is to get off, get, like to get that fast food boost and to get that fast culture early. So that's why he's moving for a turn three settle here. All right, so he started out with a scout. Other than that, he's just dicking around with his warrior. He's gonna go for animal husbandry first here. And that's because you always wanna try and reveal horses on the map as early as you possibly can. And that's because A, like horses are good for domination for one thing, but two, also it just makes for a good, an, another great tile to possibly settle a city meal so, or near, sorry. So it like opens up your options basically of the different choices you might have to settle your second city. And especially in domination games, it's really important to settle like strong cities as fast as you can. So you can then just start your push and start chopping out armies. Anyway, so you can see he got first meet here on a culture and a religious city state. So that's nice. He got both plus one faith, which is helping him get towards his pantheon earlier. And then the plus one culture too. Uh, so he finished his scout and chose to go with his slinger. Slingers are a good thing in the early game. Like for newer players, they're great for early defense, but more importantly for more advanced players who are capable of defending themselves and comfortable doing so with very few units. There's still a great choice early because you can then get the Eureka for archery by killing a unit with a slinger, not to mention helping you get towards bronze working quicker on a domination game because you ideally want to kill three barbarian units to boost bronze working and get your encampment that much earlier. All right, so he found another barbarian camp there with his, his scout. But the whole point in getting the scout out early is to find enemy civilizations as quickly as you can in order to get air score and the same thing for finding natural wonders and goody huts and stuff like that so you don't want to waste time dicking around with barbarians too much you just want to keep getting out there as quickly as you can and that's definitely something that he's going to be trying to get in this is at a golden age because he wants to be able to get monumentality to get the discount on and, and be able to purchase builders and settlers for 30 percent cheaper you can see there he crossed 50 bucks for the first time and immediately bought the tile to the north the rice paddy there in order to get the food and culture and locked it in because it's all about growing your city as fast as possible and that early game culture boost with this strategy all right so he went like i know you can't see the text but he went with the god king <laughs> <laughs> uh, economic policy card in order to get to his pantheon quicker so you can see he's at plus two faith now up in the top left corner and he went with the discipline policy card in order to get the plus five combat strength against barbarians meanwhile tech wise he went to mining right after he finished animal husbandry and then civics he chose to go for foreign trade because he's headed towards early empire because you want to get that colonization policy card up so you can get the plus 50 percent production on your settler all right so meanwhile he's just like swinging away the barb camp up there in the north and now he's headed with his slinger over to the, the barb camp to his east for promotions wise on the warrior he took battle cry on the left side there again i know it's all in chinese and you can't see it so it's a good thing i know what that is uh and it gives you plus seven combat strength to both uh when you're attacking both ranged and melee units Okay, so there with his slinger, he's going to basically bait out the spearmen, or try to anyway, because they will always try and engage your ranged units. And you can see that's what he was doing there. I think he was going to try and, and let him come across the river and attack, but then he saw the warrior. All right, so now I'm pretty sure he's just going to fucking hightail it. 
Meanwhile, with the warrior that Camps dealt with in the promotion was taken, so he just continues to explore. And the same thing with his scout. All right, so I believe he got foreign trade to the point where he was about to have it boosted. And that's why he switched into craftsmanship. And now tech-wise, he's finished mining and is going into archery next. Okay, yeah, and now he got the boost of foreign trade, you can see, so he only has one turn left, and he switched back into it once he boosted it. So now he's going straight for early empire again. And he met Jedwiga there. Okay, and so he's going with urban planning, that's the plus one production slot, and he kept discipline in because he's still dealing with the barbarians. I have to say, he's a lot braver than I am with that slinger. Oh, I guess he didn't have a choice. There's a fucking mountain there blocking him. All right, and he met another enemy, the Nubians. And they got powerful early game archers too, so that'll be interesting to see how it plays out. See, this is where, like, I would love to understand Chinese and speak Chinese. Oh, by the way, I think I fucking forgot. This is Rogue Star playing. He's my favorite Civ 6 player. However, as you probably could tell by now, he speaks Chinese and he posts on Billy Billy. It's like the Chinese version of YouTube, basically. So there's a link down in the description to his channel so that if you do speak Chinese or even like me, if you're just interested in studying him, like I've honestly spent probably 100 or 200 hours watching him play and taking notes myself years ago just so I could get better like he is fucking unbelievable like his he his domination games he wins usually between like turn 90 and turn like 110 in that range and then like science and shit he's like 150 to 160 that's generally where he wins his games like all of them standard speed and all of them standard sized maps with seven ai opponents on deity like it's just silly i'm honestly like such a fanboy to the point where i honestly want to learn fucking chinese just so i can watch and learn because he's like his channel from what i understand anyway is kind of like mine how it's built to like teach people how to play the game better he literally tells you how to do what he's doing right now on his channel if only you could understand chinese like oh it just <laughs> fucking it is what it is, I guess. Anyways, uh, getting back to the game here. So tech-wise, he went pottery on his slinger that got promoted there after dealing with the barbarians. He took the side that gives you the combat strength for fighting units. Um, I can't remember the, the name of the promotion off the top of my head, but it's not the one that you get 10 combat strength when in districts. It's the other one. Okay, so he met a third AI there. It's the new version of the Congo. And meanwhile, he still has two turns left on his original settler. Plus that barbarian spearman from the camp there decided to go on a fucking journey for some reason. And just abandoned their camp altogether. Uh. So basically from what I can take away from this anyway, is that right there he was spending time looking for the ideal place for him to settle his second city. Plus now he has his Pantheon, so he's going to basically be looking at uh, the Builder Pantheon where you get like one free Builder and plus 10% um, plus ten percent population growth or the Earth Goddess, I think it's called. The, the one where you get, f yeah, Earth Goddess, the one where you get faith from um, breathtaking appeal tiles and higher. And he ends up going here and he chooses the builder route. And I don't know, like the way this plays out, I mean, clearly he wins in 90 fucking turns. Who am I to critique him? But I honestly think it would be an interesting choice to go with the faith approach to this, just to like have that extra generation of faith, especially if you're, you're going to be like dead set on getting the money. See, I wish I knew what this sets right here. Like, what does that say? If you know Chinese, please take a minute and just quickly tell me what that says. But anyway, uh, so he went with the Pantheon where you get the free builder here. Now, it is a really good choice too because obviously it's going to allow him to get the boost for craftsmanship by improving three tiles, right? 
So he went up north straight away to improve the rice paddy first. And meanwhile, he's just continuing to explore with all his units. All right, so he snipes the frickin' barb camp with the slinger because the spearman went on vacation. Uh, meanwhile, air score wise, he's 16 to 25 so far, so he's he's making good progress towards the golden age. Uh, and, and he went with a builder after his settler finished in the capital. And now I think he's trying to <laughs> figure out whether he wants to risk losing his, his builder there, <laughs> but he's bringing his slinger back to help out too, so. Okay, next up, he's going to be getting that luxury online. And in case you don't know, it's really important to get your luxuries improved as quickly as possible in the early game because you want to sell them off for lump sum gold in order to really take advantage of that gold to help speed up your game and propel you forward. Shit, he ran into the horseman down there. Hopefully he can scoot away quickly. It looks like he found the Cree too. Okay, so he got pottery. Now, the reason he switched out and went towards pottery was because he has all these different luxuries around that require irrigation to get them. So it's definitely worth it to make the side trip away from like his bronze working and all the other shit that he was going for, like archery and all that, in order to get these luxuries up online. So again, he can sell them for bulk gold, which he can then use to just like snowball, right? He's got a nice location there. He's got the two rice patties plus the sugar cube or whatever the fuck it is there to the to the west. Like, that is, is a nice setup. Well, I guess he got lucky. The horseman left him alone there. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he's going to go into irrigation right after this. And again, see, he's looking to see how much they're willing to pay for his honey. And they're not willing to pay a lot. So he's not selling it at this point. He's going to hold on to it until they get to that point where... They're willing to actually pay good money for it and you can see there for his second city he settled directly on the tile that gave him extra food and culture but plus he chose a location that also has a lot of forest to chop because it's important when you're playing domination games to chop out your armies as early as humanly possible so he's got nice choices there there's forests nearby there's stone he's got a good setup basically like that the setup over to the the west there with the rice patties and and the sugar the only bad thing about that location is that there really isn't that many chops to make especially because the culture city states right there too with their borders right so they're going to continue to expand and it'll probably gobble up some of those tiles before you can get to them okay so he got early empire now civics wise and now he goes for craftsmanship Builds a quarry, which also gives him the boost for, uh, what is it, the, the wheel, I think. Or not, not, not the boost. Yeah, it's the boost, whatever, the Eureka. I was thinking inspiration, but I said the boost, so technically I wasn't wrong. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so he's got one, ter one turn left now on craftsmanship. Two more turns to go for irrigation. He's got another slinger coming out of the capital in a minute there. I don't know what she was saying because she she didn't denounce him. So I think she was just saying something random. All right, so he bought the honey there for himself. And now he's going for another settler and he's going to put the colonization part, card in. And of course, he's still keeping the discipline policy card in for the plus five combat strength against barbarians. And you can see he's, as soon as he put that colonization card in, he also switched to a settler in the second city there. And now he's going towards state workforce for the next civic. And you want to get your, your government plaza started as soon as you can. And again, he's just shopping his resources now. Okay, so irrigation's done. There's another barb camp up there, but it looks like somebody else is hitting it too. And now he's heading into archery. He quickly checked if any of them would pay money for his open borders. Now that he has early empire. Didn't take any of them there. And that's a one, another great thing about 
Cleopatra is all these floods, it doesn't matter, right? They they don't damage you. They can only ever improve your tiles and improve your situation. So definitely a nice perk to have, that's for sure. Okay, we're on turn 36 already, so he's playing pretty quickly. He's actually not playing quickly. I've, I've gone through and I've edited out all the excessively long waits and stuff like that. But either way, the game's coming along is what I'm trying to say. All right, so he met another opponent there. So that's two, four, five of them all together that he's met so far. All right, so he bought another tile there. And the reason he bought it was he wanted the production. It's a 2 2 tile he bought. As you can see, he doesn't have very many good tiles over there because he's going to be chopping all those out. He really only has the, the plus 2 plus 2 that is good for production, right? That's weird. I think he sent him a delegation there. I'm not entirely sure why he did that. Like, what the reasoning? Maybe because he was so far away and he wants somebody to be able to trade resources with like even after he ends up attacking people i'm not a hundred percent sure again like you can only get so much by watching and, and trying to put the puzzle pieces together in your head right okay so he found horses so that's definitely nice still seven turns away from state workforce though and you have to build a specialty district to boost it, I'm pretty sure, if I remember off the top of my head. I think that's where he's he's planning to build his next city. He's, like, showing that there's a whole bunch of chops down to the south there, just below the spices. Alright, so he's going for bronze working now that he's finished archery. And that's because I think he wants to unveil iron iron on the map like plus getting your encampment is isn't a bad thing either I, i'm just saying i think that's why he chose bronze working first instead of going for his chariot archer or towards the the horseman there that he's eventually planning on again just shopping his resources All right, so he finished the settler in the capital and started on a builder next. Again, it's really important to get builders out as quickly as you can, not only to upgrade the luxuries like he has been in the early game, but now it's getting to the point where he's gonna be chopping his first army really, really soon. Oh, and one thing I missed now that I'm thinking about it, he took Amani when he got his first governor and that's because he wanted to send her to different city-states for to get the error score from becoming suzerain of them. So speaking of error score, he's up to 22 now. He's three error score away from securing a golden age for himself for the classical. We're on turn 41. All right, so it looks like he just purchased a builder there and switched into making another settler. So that's a third settler altogether. Sorry, I guess I should specify a third settler since he got the colonization policy card is what I was trying to say. Which would put him at, at a total of five, five cities total, which would be a nice little platform to chop out several armies. Because basically what I like to do, and I mean, I picked this up from learning and watching him is... I like to chop out two separate armies and have one go in each direction of the map basically and just kind of like basically more or less meet in the middle sometimes if it works out on the map otherwise like just completely divide and conquer right and that way you can knock out enemy civilizations as quickly as you can because in the grand scheme of things other than like basically the first civ you kill where you really want their cities and you really want the extra yields and stuff that you get for them. It's more and so more important rather, sorry, just to knock them out as quickly as you possibly can. All right. So there you go. He finished a builder there and because he had craftsman complete, he went and built a unique tile improvement. Not only does it give you extra culture, which is great for him, but 
It gave him the era score he needed. Now he secured his golden age. And so while we're doing this, like sort of a play by play style, what I'm going to actually do is after I've I've done that for the whole kitten caboodle, like when he wins on turn 90, I'm going to have been taking notes throughout this whole experience. And I'm going to make an overall strategy guide that summarizes his entire playthrough and all his different like ideas that break down like step by step kind of what he does and what what he should be looking for and what you should do so if you're interested i'll put a link at the top of the comment section that you can follow that guide i mean it's not going to be out the second that i make this but i will have something else there linked in the meantime until that is there but it shouldn't be too long all right so i'm assuming that's eight turns left until the end of of the era here uh, meanwhile he's got four turns to go until bronze working one more until state workforce is finished He's got quite the crew of barbarians he's dealing with up there. However, he does have the plus five combat strength card, so he should be okay. Meanwhile, it looks like he, he reached the edge of the Pangea over on that side. And so what he was doing there by, by clicking on her, he's checking who she knows so that he can have a better idea of what direction to send his scout in in order to find new AIs to meet. Okay, so he's dropping his third city there. And he's going to put his government plaza right next to his capital, I'm pretty sure. Because it would just take forever to make in his new city. He's checking his policy cards there, and he just slotted in the Agoge policy card in order to boost production of melee and range units by 50%. I wish I knew what this said on the screen right there. So again, if you happen to speak Chinese, please, 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 please let me know. No, honestly, I really would appreciate it. I don't mean to why I'm like a little bitch. Just, oh, I'd give my fucking left nut to know what he says. Okay, so here he's looking through for the different appeal and whatnot. And this is why, like, I, I think at this point, he's kind of reflecting on his choice to go for... The pantheon that had the builder or the pantheon the earth goddess pantheon which would have given him faith for appeal and i don't know whether he's like oh fuck i should have went with earth goddess after all look at this appeal or if he's just thinking about it or, or what that was all about but that would be my guess anyway so he secured his golden age he's overshot it already he's 28 out of 25 at the moment and now tech wise he's headed towards the wheel to unlock their unit their magical chariot archer i never realized actually how good the thing was like i i knew it was decent but i didn't realize that it had that bonus where you get plus four movement speed if you start on flat terrain for your turn so it can really really fly across the map and i i honestly just had somehow completely overlooked that part of part of the unit Okay, meanwhile, he just got horses up and running in his second city there. He also picked Magnus once he got state workforce, for, so he chose Magnus as the second governor. And that's political philosophy too, by the way, if you don't know just by looking at the card, that the civic that he's researching, he has six turns to go before political philosophy. All right, he's tuck, tucking his tail between his legs and running with that slinger down to the south there, back to the safety of a city, hopefully. And you can see there, he didn't finish bronze working. He just went straight into the wheel. I'm not entirely sure what his logic was behind that, to be completely honest. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's already killed three barbarians, so he should have bronze working boosted. Oh, you know what it could have been? He could have been saving... Uh, whatchamacallit, saving the production cost to place down his, his government plaza before he unlocks another district. That could be one, one thing he's doing. I'm not entirely sure if that was the reason he switched out of it, but just a thought. Okay, three turns left in the era, so we're closing in on the classical age at least. 
And if you haven't, please do me a favor, leave a like on the video. It actually does go a long way towards helping a small channel like me grow. So I definitely appreciate it. And I mean, as most of you probably know by now, I'm pretty special. So I could use all the help I can get. Okay, two turns. We got one turn left on the settler in the capital. That barbarian's seen better days. He's going to have him cleared out there in a second. There's still two more civilizations he hasn't met on the map as of yet as well. And with how much of the map he's discovered, he's got to be asking himself, like, where the fuck are they, basically, I'm pretty sure. It looks like one's probably to the top right of his position. And spoiler alert, there is one up there. I'm just, and I'm not sure where the other one is. All right, Tex, yeah, see, so he switched back into bronze working. So that, I'm pretty sure that's what he was doing, was just make, making sure that the production cost of his government plaza was minimized before he could lock it in there. And in case you don't know, the, the way that works is that um, the price of your districts goes up the more you have unlocked and also the more technologies and civics that you have discovered okay so there you go he just hit his golden age in the classical era and timed it out perfectly too where political philosophy was the turn after so he didn't waste the air score as is definitely definitely a nice move on his part and believe me it was completely intentional uh, meanwhile he finished that settler and jumped straight into the government plaza in his capital there. We got about another minute here before this is all finished up for, for this part anyway. We're going to break this down into three videos I think would pretty much be a good amount to cover everything. Like just part one, part two, and part three. And like I said, I will do that actual like overall strategy summary and analysis video. It'll be more condensed. It'll be like a short like 5, 10, 15 minute thing tops rather than this like play by play style that we're doing here at first. All right. So speaking of play by play, I'm actually going to pause this so I can see what he's doing. Because I got I to gotta think about the policy cards here because I don't speak Chinese. All right. So th this one here is he still has a goge in for the plus 50 percent towards melee and ranged that's colonization and that's urban planning and he just put conscription in and then decides to switch it out and he put discipline back in for the plus five combat strength and barbarians and there you go that is the first play part of the playthrough here and thanks for watching. I'm going to shut up and I'll just catch you in the next video.